Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I meet again, G, reporting for The Media Speaks. <clears throat> and, uh, as always, we're going to fly directly right into the news. Uh, I got a little ding ding here as I pull in, uh, looking to see if somebody's trying to join me. Best way to do that is to go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, by the way, because when you do that, then what you will find out is you'll be able to keep up on not just what I'm doing, but what everyone is doing. Uh, send me those right before I go on next time, not right after. Hey, I'm happy for listeners, however they find me. Uh, MercuryNews.com, San Jose Mercury News. John McAfee reveals the details on Gadget to Thwart NSA. I'm leading off with this story instead of the government shutdown for a couple of reasons. First of all, the media speaks has already covered the government shutdown. Second of all, you know what? Let them shut it down. Now, I know those people out there are saying, well, wait a minute, what about the poor people, Sam? Don't you care about them? Yes, I care about them. I care about them enough to know that, according to the Constitution, anything that is not laid out in the Constitution is to be left up to the states. That's what our Founding Fathers wanted. One of the reasons that our Founding Fathers wanted that was so that in the event of a government shutdown, which they knew could happen, the poor wouldn't be left holding the bag if it was left to states. Now, would it? Because your state's probably not shutting down. Anybody listening to this? Alaska, Alabama, Arkansas, anybody? Anybody got a state shutting down? No. That's why the Constitution's written the way it is. Um, guys, for those of you who McAfee sounds uh, familiar, that's because for those of you that are a bit dated, such as my, uh, yourself, uh, myself, um, if you yourself happen to be so, that's because McAfee used to run um, antivirus software that everybody had. And it used to do great. And then later on, of course, I went to AVG. I've heard things about Microsoft Essentials. I got a nasty virus on Microsoft Essentials and went right back to AVG. But um, in any event, nobody uses McAfee or Norton anymore because they never catch viruses. Uh, McAfee's technology, unless it's changed since I've used it a number of years ago, it couldn't catch a virus if your computer started coughing. Uh, it wouldn't, I don't know what it is. <coughs> I jinxed myself. Um, however, that's not McAfee's fault. McAfee left that company, got out of it. McAfee's actually done a, a lot of uh, interesting things, and we're going to get into this here. Um, and this is why it's my lead-off story. I was delighted to hear this, friends. Absolutely delighted. John McAfee lived up to his reputation Saturday as Tech's most popular wild child, electrifying an audience with new details of his plan to thwart the NSA's surveillance of ordinary Americans with an inexpensive pocket-sized gadget. Dubbed a Decentral, the as-yet built device will cost less than $100, McAfee promised the enthusiastic crowd of about 300 engineers, musicians, and artists from the San Jose McEnery Convention Center. There will be no way for the government to tell who you are or where you are, he said in an on-stage interview with moderator Dan Holden on the inaugural C2SV Technolo Technology Conference and Music Festival. And if the government bans its sale, I'll sell it in England. Japan, the third world, this is coming and it cannot be stopped. Oh my God, we love you, Mr. McAfee. The ambitious, some say, uh, how many of you know what Don Quixote is, chaotic? I hate when people say that because nobody reads, no one knows what that means, but it's a reference to Don Quixote. The ambitious, some say, chaotic project is the latest chapter of McAfee's colorful life. The antivirus software pioneer's antics have included his widely, I'm not going to read about this fight he was in there trying to frame him with it. And he, just, he didn't pay a bribe, so he left the country. Uh, go to the article if you want to read the hype. I'm getting to the important things. Um, during the interview, the 68-year-old spiky black-haired tipped blonde who wore light blue cargo pants and a black sweatshirt remarked to a wide range of topics, from how quickly he gets bored once one of his creations comes to fruition, including the software security company that he founded, to, the now, and to how yoga helped him 30 years ago quit using drugs, including his favorite, which were psychedelic mushrooms. Um... Now, oh, where's the important stuff here? McAfee outlined what some might regard as a pie-in-the-sky plan to finish the first prototype of Decentral in six months. He said that the gadget is called Decentral because by communicating with smartphones, 
tablets, and other devices, it will create decentralized floating and move local markets that can't be penetrated by government spy agencies. I let off with wonderful news, didn't I? The design is in place already for a version whose range will be three blocks from the city and up to a quarter of a mile in the country, he said. The device will be compatible with both Android and iPhones. More wonderful news. As far as consumers' appetite for such a gizmo, he said, I cannot imagine one college student in the world that will not stand in line to get one. Commuters will also find it useful, he said. Neighborhoods will be better able to fight crime because Decentral will include an option that sends an alert if a burglary is in progress or for any other crime. Um, he said the idea for the device came to him well before computer analyst and whistleblower hero Edward Snowden leaked National Security Agency documents that exposed widespread monitoring of U.S. citizens' phone calls and Internet communications. But with Snowden's actions, it became the right time to make it real, he said. You know what? That is what a hero is in my book. Uh, they ask if he thought the criminals would use it to evade authorities. He says, and, uh, I, it will, of course, be used for nefarious purposes, he said, just like the telephone is. Exactly. We don't, you know, we don't, everybody with a phone doesn't need spying on either. McAfee, I'm telling you, you've knocked it out of the park on this one. On behalf of the correct views, God bless you, my friend, in the highest. Um, on the not-so-good news, uh, Fukushima Diary. Lead Crane was brand new to be in operation in Fukushima plant. For those of you that don't know, when I read this, I'm going to sound like I'm drunk. That's because uh, Japan, uh, the Japanese language, when it goes into the receptor language of English, sometimes doesn't have a word-for-word -word flowing translation. I read it like it's written. Um, also, for those of you that like my uh, Fukushima updates, <coughs> that is uh, throughout the month, but then one or two massive shows uh, each month. It's going to be coming real soon, as is the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. So all of those are coming up real soon. Following up this article, Lean Crane at Reactor 3 had annual inspection only three months ago and daily tests in the beginning of the day. In the press conference in 9-9-2013, Tepco commented that the crane was brand new when it started being used at the Fukushima plant. They had it in operation in August of 2011. It had a significant crack only in two years, where it was supposed to last 15 to 20 years. TEPCO hasn't mentioned the deterioration increased by the high levels of radiation. In other words, it looks very likely that the, ra the radiation is so high, so unbelievably high in Fukushima right now, that it's starting to deteriorate things like cranes. It's just cooking them. And the number of people in this world that have no idea even what Fukushima is is staggering to me. If you happen to hit this show for another topic, do me a favor. Stop eating seafood. Stop eating anything out of the Pacific Ocean. Stop eating anything from the West Coast. Don't live in the West Coast. Get the hell out of Hawaii. Um, uh, what else is there to say? Uh, there's going to be a big uh, Fukushima update, but I felt the need to pass that on because those of you with any engineering expertise, or those of you that know anything about what goes into these machines, to cook a crane? I mean, you don't see it though, because people don't, don't, don't allow themselves to learn this and realize that just because they don't see a fire burning away, those cranes are cooking. Proof positive. Um, and this is from I, uh, Planet Infowars, Idea to Fix the Economy by Johnny Boy 11111777. Hey, Johnny Boy. People hate when you use a name like that. However, he did the most awesome article. I'm going to spend a minute on this. He has a pretty good way to fix the economy. I have an idea that should, in theory, fix our entire, economic, entire economy within a matter of years. Here's how it goes. I call this the stimulus method. The government would issue every American citizen over the age of 18 who could prove that they are an American citizen with proper documentation, a stimulus check for $5,000. Then, the people who receive this money would be required by the government to put that money back into the economy by investing it in businesses and corporations nationwide. Each person who received the stimulus checks would then be required to keep receipts that would account for every bit of the $5,000 that was given to them, and at the end of the year would be required to present the receipts to a local government office located within an area zip code county. It goes on and I'm going to. 
As for businesses that would be listed as relisted re re on the receipts, there would be a blanket requirement that would be broken into three parts. For the businesses that receive the most from the stimulus money from each American citizen, they would be required to pay the government a blanket amount of 25% of their earnings for the year that were based upon the amounts that were listed on the receipts that each American was required to show to account for how <coughs> they spent their five grand. For the companies that received an average mid-range amount that was based upon the money accounted for on the receipts presented by those who received the stimulus, those companies would be mandated to pay 15% of the money that they took in for the year that was based on the amount of money accounted for in the receipts. Lastly, for businesses or companies that received the lowest range for their yearly earnings based on the amount accounted for that was presented on the receipts collected by each American who received the stimulus, those businesses and companies would be required to pay 10% of their yearly earnings back to the government at the end of the year. This would be a win-win situation for everyone in America. The feds, it, I'm sorry, it feeds the greed of the United States government because they would rake in billions of surplus dollars per year based upon the percentages paid out from the companies where the American citizens spent their stimulus. It also feeds the greed of the businesses and companies who would also rake in billions of surplus dollars for the year based also upon the stimulus money paid to them by each American citizen who spent it at their location. And it also helps every single American citizen who received the stimulus money to swim instead of tread water in their bills and yearly living expenses. Guys, I like this. Uh, there's, a, there's more to the article. Uh, look it up. It's called Idea to Fix the Economy. It's on uh, Planet.Infowars by JohnnyBoy111177, who has an awful screen name, but quite a good idea. Guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. When you do, right away you're helping the Media Speaks. They help us. We in turn use every penny that we get from this to do a better show, to bring you better material, more material, more often. And what do you get when you go to Bud K's? What, you just gotta buy something to support us, but it's all just a bunch of junk? No, that's actually really good. We got hunting season on the way up, and uh, how many people crossbow hunt out there? I know, I've used rifles, I get it, I understand. But do we have anybody that uses crossbows? If you do, there's the Avalanche Mini Crossbow Tactical Pistol, 1999 at Bud K. Uh, the Avalanche Trailblazer Crossbow Wooden Stock, uh, it's 150 pounds, uh, 99 dollars uh, You better get that for someone who's core into it, I'll tell you that. Uh, another one for the, the core, I will say, Avalanche Folding Takedown Survival Crossbow, 99.99. Uh, and then, of course, the Mac Daddy, the Barnett Crossbow Quad 400, $399. They've got a $599 Barnett Crossbow Ghost 350 CRT. And again, you don't have to be that into it. They've got cheaper ones. We got $29.99, the Avalanche Mini Crossbow Tactical Pistol, 80 pounds. If you know someone that enjoys these things, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on the Bud K ad purchase something. Don't just go to Bud K. Do it that way so that it helps us get the most out of your winner. Guys, uh, Breitbart.com. New report scales back global warming. I think I was called a flat earther the other day because I pointed to proof that man-made global warming isn't happening. I hate to be the one to tell you people, but man-made global warming simply is not happening. Or, come on, how many people know what I'm going to say? Man-made global warming is a lie. Somebody sample that and put a house beat behind it for me, please. On September 27th, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change will release part of their fifth assessment report on climate change. For the first time since 1990, this report will scale back the hysteria on global warming. Well, let, let, let's go to our... Uh, let's go to our, our... There he is. There is the, uh, one of the dumbest politicians to ever, ever hold office in the country. Uh, the, the, man, the man who told you, it taught you all that polar bears cannot swim. They can. Now I gave you Al Gore. <sighs> Matt Ridley of the Wall Street Journal revealed a few leaks from the 31-page document and talked to one of the senior climate scientists. The temperature rise due to man-made carbon dioxide is lower than their prediction in 2007. That was not that long ago. 
Originally, a 3 degrees Celsius increase was predicted, but that number is now expected to be between 1 and 2.5 degrees. Specifically, the draft report says that equilibrium climate sensitivity, the ECS, eventual warming induced by a doubling of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which takes hundreds of years to occur, is extremely likely, likely to be above 1 degree Celsius, likely to be above 1.5 degrees, and very likely to be below 6 degrees. In 2007, the IPPC said it was likely to be above 2 degrees Celsius and very likely to be above 1.5 degrees, with no upper limit. Since extremely and, v and very have uh, specific and different statistical meanings here, the comparison is difficult. Most experts believe that warming of less than 2 degrees Celsius from pre-industrial levels will result in no net economic or econo ecological damage. Therefore, the new report is effectively saying, based on the middle of the range of the IPCC's emissions scenarios, that there is a better than 50-50 chance that by 2083, the benefits of climate change will still outweigh the harm. Oh, but man-made global warming is going to kill us all, and Sam, if you don't believe it, you're part of the Flat Earth Society. Warming of up to 1.2 degrees Celsius over the next 70 years... <clears throat> which most of which is predicted to happen in cold areas in winter and at night would extend the range of farming further north, improve crop yields, slightly increase rainfall, especially in arid areas, enhance rainforest growth, and cut winter deaths, which far exceeds summer deaths in most places. Oh, I'm not going to get to be a eugenicist. Increased carbon dioxide levels also have caused, and will continue to cause, an increase in the growth rates of crops and greening of the earth. Because plants will grow faster and need less water when carbon dioxide concentrations are higher. So now, the, the slight warming we're having is actually going to be a benefit. And if you don't believe this, ask anybody that lives near a freeway, uh, where they're getting blasted by carbon emissions all day. The more traffic, the higher the greenery, the more it grows. Ridley pointed out that many papers in the past year have come to the same conclusion. Scientists at the University of Illinois and Oslo University in Norway found ECS levels would be lower than the model showed. <clears throat> Three papers followed, including one produced by 14 lead authors of the IPCC report that backed the evidence. Francis Veers and others at the University of Victoria, British Columbia found that global warming was overestimated by 100% over 20 years. A 100% lie. No word yet on Al Gore's reaction to this very report. So the point is, we're getting more and more and more frequently, uh, more frequent proof published by ever more credible journals that is simply proving that man-made global warming isn't happening. Now, if you want to talk about using other uh, fuels because the carbon in the air, or the, the emissions in the air are causing cancers, I'll listen to you because that's obviously happening. But to bring in this lie of man-made global warming just to increase our taxes and let the UN further draw us in, and for those of you that don't know, the UN wants to be the kingdom of the world and they're using uh, man-made global warming to do it. And it's a lie, and it, it's, because, it's such a lie now that it, it's getting to the point where they can't even hide it. I want to go ahead and uh, call this up for you real quick. This is not good news, and I admit, guys, I have a sweet tooth. I eat garbage food all the time. I had a brownie yesterday. I didn't try to cut it down. You're going to see why. Uh, this is from the Telegraph, co.uk. Sugar is addictive and the most dangerous drug of the times. Soft drinks should carry tobacco-style warnings that sugar is highly addictive and dangerous, a senior Dutch health official has warned. You know what? I agree. I'm not in favor of banning anything. I don't want to see kids not be able to buy it. I, I simply want it to be labeled. That's not too much to ask for what I'm about to read. Paul van der Valpen, the head of Amsterdam's health service, the Dutch capital city where the sale of cannabis is legalized, wants to see sugar tightly regulated. In other words, he's more worried about it than weed, as he should be. <clears throat> Just like alcohol and tobacco, sugar is actually a drug. There is an important role for government. The use of sugar should be discouraged, and users should be made aware of the dangers, he wrote on an official, open public health, official public health website. 
This may seem exaggerated and far-fetched, but sugar is the most dangerous drug of the times and can still be easily acquired everywhere. Mr. Van der Velten cites research claiming that sugar, unlike fat or other foods, interferes with the body's appetite, creating an insatiable desire to carry on eating, an effect he assesses in the food industry is using to increase consumption of their products. Sugar upsets that mechanism. Whoever uses sugar wants more and more, even when they are no longer hungry. Give someone eggs and he'll stop eating at any given time. Give him cookies and he eats to even though his stomach is painful, he er, argued. Sugar is actually a form of addiction. It's just as hard to get rid of the urge to sweet as it is of smoking. And thereby diets only work temporarily. Addiction therapy would work better. See that too, I really could. The senior health official wants to see sugar taxes and legal limits set on the amount that can be added to processed food. Again, labeling. I'm not in favor of banning anything. When you ban something, all you do is an underground sugar market. I am not in favor of that. He also wants cigarette-style warnings. That's fine. Health insurers should have to finance addiction therapy for their obese clients. Schools should no longer be allowed to sell sweets and soft drinks. And that's when he loses me. I mean, that's when you're going to have kids using it even more just to prove how cool they are, and they, which is exactly what's happened with everything else that we've seen this with. So uh, let's not go that route. Guys, last thing I want to get to as I call this down, um, how many of you have decided that you're not in danger? It doesn't affect you any, because you have made the ever so intelligent switch to give up sugar. And you now drink diet drinks. In case you want to know what I drink, by the way, by the water. Or any generic version of it. They don't pay me anything, so why should I? Um, PrisonPlanet.com. Aspartame, the GMO excrement polluting your body. This is from Christina Sarich at Prison Planet. It's actually worse for you than sugar. If you get a sugar craving, just eat something that's got sugar in it. And don't go for the aspartame. It's even worse. If you switch to diet soda, hoping to avoid refined sugar or any other fizzy drink or aspartame, and it's important that refined sugar is worse than regular sugar, by the way, uh, you are now guzzling down a product created by one of the GM giants, Monsanto, and those are the people that are in adding uh, bug sprays and toxins to our food, and if you've never heard of this before, simply look it up and you'll be right back watching this video to catch the end of it, because I'm not crazy, I'm telling you the truth. Many scientists are calling for further study of a genetically modified bacteria which is used to create aspartame, but the evidence is already quite glaring that the food stuff is no good. It has been a, it has been a secret until recently, one that Monsanto clearly didn't want to get out, that one of the most utilized sweeteners in our food chain is genetically modified. Monsanto insists that it is completely safe. However, just because there are no modified DNA in the final product, Though this doesn't mean that it can't harm our bodies. A writer with The Independent says, We have two strains of bacteria. One is traditionally modified and one is genetically modified. Said, uh, said one Monsanto source. It's got a modified enzyme. It has one amino acid that is different. Interestingly, aspartame is made using genetically modified bacteria in the U.S., but according to a Monsanto source, the U.K. market does not have to eat genetically modified bacteria poop, which is really what it is. Uh, the bacteria, craps, poops, whatever word you want to use, and that poop is sweet, and they use it to make aspartame. That is an uh, uh, absolute fact, by the way. Um, in the... In areas where it's illegal, they, they, they don't have to eat that. So that's proof right there that they'll feed Americans any poison that's legal. And uh, everybody laughed at Ron Paul when he wanted to get rid of the FDA. Well, look what they're allowing us to eat. What good are they? What are they doing? They're not doing anything. Some consumer groups warn, however, that some low-calorie foods may still contain the GMO aspartame, even overseas. GMA aspartame may cause blindness, cancer, and brain tumors. Oh, not like a good brain tumor so that you can continue enjoying your favorite beverage. Aspartame is made by combining phenylalanine, a substance that is produced naturally by bacteria, with another amino acid that has not been genetically altered. However, Monsanto has genetically changed the bacteria to create more of the chemical. When this amino acid chain breaks down, it breaks down into three constituents, including methanol, which has been linked to autism, which we're seeing more and more of, 
preterm delivery, and more. This is then broken down in the body to formic acid, which when handled in the lab you have to wear goggles and gloves. But that's what this breaks down to in your body after you've had a Diet Coke. And formaldehyde. Now formaldehyde, for those of you that don't know, is what they put in your body so that you don't rot during your calling hours. It breaks down to formaldehyde. Aspartame in your diet pop becomes formaldehyde. Something that's used to clean drains and embalm dead bodies and a known carcinogen, that means it gives you cancer for you Lady Gaga fans. It also breaks down into a chemical called DKP, which can cause brain tumors. This according to a study published on the U.S. Food and Drug Administration site about aspartame. So even they know this. Of course, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Monsanto, they're doing everything they can do to add these ingredients into our beverages. A last thing I want to get to, even the National Cancer Institute will tell you that formaldehyde is a cancer risk. Formaldehyde, says their site, has been classified as a known human cancer-causing substance by the International Agency for Research on Cancer as a probable human carcinogen by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Use the thinking part of your brain. You are listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off. Do me a favor. Share this link. Nothing helps me grow. Subscribe. Hit subscribe. If you haven't hit subscribe, hit it. Um, go to the Media Speaks, look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Please donate to the show if you can. The Correct Views on Hotmail.com. Every penny you give me, a penny goes towards a better show. More information, better news. Good night, friends. God bless. Go to the Media Speak. excuse me, go to uh, the Charity Connection and uh, look up Dana Mobley. Chris, she's beating lung cancer because of the money you donate. Let's keep her beating it. God bless, friends.